Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the fourth episode of Tailwind Talks. My name is Devin Shally Brumbaugh, and I am the Director of Leasing and Marketing for Tailwind Group. Today, I am joined by my good friend and just pal in all things work, Colleen Luter, who is our Director of Corporate Operations. Before we get into a little bit about Colleen, I wanted to just say that we hope that you listen to episode three with Brandon and Michael. It was a really great episode. And this probably doesn't look like our usual filming location because we're taking Tailwind Talks on the road. We are actually in my hometown of Columbus, Ohio, recording Colleen drove in from East Lansing, Michigan. So we're doing things a little bit different this episode, testing the limits, the boundaries, seeing what all we can do. And we'll, we'll just see how this goes. But Colleen, how are you doing this morning? This is fun. This is exciting. Thanks for inviting me. I told Devin, I was like, when she asked, I'm like, I am not a podcast voice, but <laughs> she knows it's very apparent I will do anything for her. So here we are. I was like, <laughs> hey, the team's going to be in Columbus. We want to record like our first episode on the road. You're only a couple hours away. There's nobody I'd rather do it with. Will you please come down and do this? And you were like, anything for you. Yeah, yeah. That's pretty much how that went. <laughs> Well, tell, tell our listeners a little bit about who you are and what you do and how you came to, to Tailwind because you've been here a while. Yeah, over seven years now. Not long history in the in the student housing industry, so I'll probably just kind of start from the beginning a little bit. I think everybody kind of in this business always starts out as I wasn't planning on being in student housing. So that is my story for sure. Started out community assistant in college, so free rent, had another job for beer money, everything was perfect. Loved, you know, signing leases, talking to all the college students. Um, not obviously my full time you know, dream of what, what I wanted to do. Dream was interior design. So my degree is in interior design. You've done some models. A little bit. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, I graduated from Michigan State University. Our focus was really hospitality design. So Vegas is like my dream world. So that's what I wanted like to hotels do. Like hotels. Hotel, and casino lobbies, restaurants, all of that. That's, that's so what, cool. what I wanted to do. But yeah, I graduated when the market tanked. I think the year before me, my class was like 99% people walked out with, you know, jobs at architecture firms or design firms. My year, it was two people with unpaid internships. So I started a little rock bottom. Sure. I moved to North Carolina for a year, chasing kind of what I thought was going to be a design job. I ended up pretty much selling fabric to elderly people for sofas at a furniture <laughs> store. It was very, I am the salesperson, like, let's put your living room together, which is not at all what I wanted to do. Missed family too much, moved back up to Michigan. And it just so happens that, you know, a friend of mine in the industry was like, hey, there's a assistant job or assistant manager job. And that's how I got back into it and just kind of fell in love with it from there. Spent a lot of time kind of growing up, kind of from leasing manager, assistant manager, property manager with a company, decided that I was kind of ready for more, took a job with another position, an area type job. So then multiple yeah. kind of like properties on it. And the, you know, story of the industry kind of sold one of one of my larger properties and just kind of came to, hey, we can't quite afford you anymore. So it was perfect timing. It was a good blessing because it was right around the time that my daughter was being born. So I kind of took some time off thought about going back into the design business a little bit, but there was just so much awesome opportunity. And I really think I found the passion in student housing. So kind of took some time off and this is where Tailwind comes into play because again, things that you, people, you know, in the industry, a long time vendor that I used on site for many years was actually the subcontractor at our renovation project in East Lansing. And Tailwind was looking for a property manager and it was, hey, we know a girl. <laughs> So that's how, yeah, so a little over seven years ago, came on board as the as the PM. I think Brandon's talked about it in a previous podcast. That your guys' like first meet was a really interesting. It's very, thing. and I I was a slow process for Tailwind. They'll probably it was several several lunch dates with like Reggie and and Kyle and Brandon, and they had to kind of. I think wine and dine me a little bit on it. And then, yeah, there was this one morning, hey, come look at this renovation project. Because you knew Quarters East Lansing to be an older property, and they had to sell you on the vision of, like, what they were going to do with exactly. it. Exactly. And so, yeah, it was. it's kind of a funny story. I finally said yes. And 
I don't know. I, I've talked about this to a lot of Tailwind people before. It's just something about the makeup of Tailwind and the people. And so like a month in to a bunch of friends, it was like, oh my gosh, this company is great. I just love working for them. And yeah, the rest has got a history, you know, from kind of the PM level, it became then our first regional positions were created. And that was me and Sat and Etsy, which is where we then yep. interact and come to be. And then, yeah, recent recent thing in the last couple of years has been the director of corporate operations. So my team now is a lot of support Every, structure. Does a little bit of yeah. everything. Yeah. yeah. So my whole history. <laughs> I think, first of all, I learned some things that I didn't know about your design past, which is super cool. But yeah, you, you know, were at East Lansing and then you became the regional manager and then they you know, got the griff around the same time. And it would have been fall of 2019. I was looking for a change, applied for a property manager position and you called me and I feel like we just like clicked right away. And you were like, Hey, can I'm in town. Like, can you come in for an interview? So that's, that's how we met, but I would love to hear it from like your perspective. You, it was so funny. Cause yeah, I mean, there's a whole history of griff a little bit. We just couldn't quite get the team right there and there were some struggles on it. And so we were really looking for you know, a superstar on it and your resume alone. I'm just like, oh my gosh. But like, it was a weird mix of, I just instantly kind of knew almost like this isn't quite, you were like bigger and better things like in Tailwind. So yes, instant. Like you came in, we're just like, we I were think Brandon vibing. was sitting there. But he I'm didn't just say like, a word. I'm loving her. <laughs> We've like got all this like, oh my God, our hopes and dreams all on the table. Like, you yeah. know, and you walked out and I remember just being like, we have to do anything to get her. And she's not going to take this like position because we leasing was like, oh, she's going to be so good at this. But I don't think we had the position yet. Yeah. And so it was like, almost like, just get her in the door. That's all we need to do. Yeah. But I, I remember that interview and I walked out and called my husband. I called Rusty and he was like, how did it go? And I was like, the regional manager and I vibed. Like, I love her and I think that she liked me. But there was another guy in there and he did not like me at all. Because like you and I were just going and going and going and he's just sitting over there with his arms kind of folded. he held his cool. Yeah. I'm just like an open book where like instant excitement about it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I would love to talk like on the topic of Griff. I would love to talk a little bit about our time, you know, stabilizing the Griff together. Because obviously you you know, we're in it working with that property long before I got there. Then you and I got there. It was COVID. I remember you came and helped with that turn. Shortly after that was my wedding. You came for that. Like that was just like so many things happened in such a short time. We had the huge partnership with the Ohio State football team where they moved a big group in that summer. Like what a just wild time that that was. Yeah. I, I think, it. yeah, the, the, the part before it was definitely a challenge on it. Like I said, we had kind of just couldn't quite get the right the right team in play and then you came along and yeah we had we had the head on it and then I think yeah I convinced Jackson Buddha to take the RSM position instead because he I think he yeah. interviewed for the PM position Alex obviously you we, know, that was we the first thing we did together yes. was we interviewed Alex who's now the property manager we interviewed him for a full-time CA position and same thing we were like he's way overqualified. There's no Never way gonna he's going to take this position. <laughs> but we offered it to him and he took it. And it was like, that was the team was like yes. you, me, Jackson and Alex was yeah. like the core. We're going to steer this ship in the right direction. And it's such a, like, I love that story because it's such a good indication of like, if you've got the right team yes. at a property, how, a difference maker. Cause I think again, that was all of a sudden we had a hundred percent lease up. Yeah. After that, we turned the reputation around. All of that like needed to happen because we had struggled the years prior. But yeah, it was there was a lot in those yep. in those years. Yep. <laughs> and then, you know, transitioning into that fall was when I moved into, you know, the corporate leasing manager position, the, the first. And I just remember I got the call when I was headed on my honeymoon and I had just seen you and Brandon and everybody at my wedding like the weekend before, which was a blast. Which and was so fun, by the way. I, I always tell this story when people are asking me about the culture at Tailwind, you know, I got married during COVID, which was a very uncertain time. And I had no expectations on people. You know, we went through all the safety protocols. If you could be there, great. If not, we understood. And when I walked into the reception, you know, I had a table here with some people missing and a table here with some people missing. And then I looked at the Tailwind table and it was completely full. There was not an empty seat. And I just remember like Brandon and Maddie flying in and you and, and your husband, Jesse, driving down and like what, like it was just like it when wasn't people- even a question. For yeah. It, <laughs> for me, when people ask me about the culture, I'm like, that's it. Like we show up for one another. We really care. We also have a really good time too. It's always a lot of fun, but- 
I remember transitioning into that fall when I got the call about moving to corporate leasing manager, you were my first phone call and I was sobbing and you were like, I don't know why you're surprised. Like (laughs) this is what you were meant to do. And you were just such a champion of my growth of, you know, we, you moved Jackson into the property manager position, you know, Alex moved up. There was just so much growth. And I just remember you being such a champion of like my development and opportunities and everybody that you had in your region. And you were a big rock for me through my first year of navigating a brand new position. And then we expanded the team and we got partnered together. It was, you know, you were the regional and I was the CLM and we, we managed a region together, which was a really fun time. It was. Again, I think we just work really well together just on the fact of, it goes both ways. Like you talk about, you know, me being a champion for you, but you've always been that for me too, like kind of through the years too. And, but like, yeah, when, you know, CLM level and regional, like, level it was fun on the fact of we're very yin and yang yes and which I think is what's awesome about it but you level me out you cool me down (laughs) Devin's like the hey I'm here I'm like the hi I'm here you know (laughs) but it's a good thing yeah but there's so many similarities because I think in that partnership our region rocked so well we had the best region we're just really competitive yes and that is similar we're like okay we now our goal is all of them lease up and all of them did yeah and our whole, all the teams, I think, were on the same level as we were. Like, okay, yeah. if region three is just going to be the best region. <laughs> yes. We had what? We had Griff, East Lansing, Bloomington, Stillwater. Stillwater was in there. Live um, Red was in there. Yeah. Res- and Vermilion. Or- and Vermilion. Yeah. And Reserve on Perkins for like a short, for a short time. time. Yeah. 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 It's quite the region. It was. Yeah. yeah. Kind of the next transition in both of our careers was, you know, we we both spent some time like at kind of a region level, partnered together. And then what was really cool was in the spring of 2022 when, you know, they were expanding that that next level of leadership and adding in director positions, like we got to grow together. And I remember I moved to director of leasing and you moved to director of corporate operations, which was a completely newly formed thing. Talk a little bit about that experience of moving to that position. I know what was special for me was getting to do it with you. Made it a little less scary of like, I'm taking this next big step, but I get to do it with my friend or going through a lot of the same things at the same time. But, you know, what what was that experience like for you moving from regional property manager to director of corporate operations? And how did you know that that's what you wanted to do? Yeah, um, it was kind of a big, really loaded question. There's it like was. eight different there's things I need to, you to there's answer a lot in there. To it. Yeah, same. Like it, it, it did settle for me on the fact of okay, we're going through this together. And a little bit what was helpful for me was you had already kind of been paving your path in your world. You know, like already kind of building your team on it. For me, it was my first brand time new. ever a brand new. So it was nice to lean on you a little bit, and still do to this day on the fact of you know what did you do? How did you do this? How did you handle this? How do you navigate the ups and downs of kind of forging forging this new path right. but that was the draw to it again you know I just talked about the whole history of it it's been you know from CA level all the way up to where I am now and there were kind of a couple different routes I could go and this one drew me in on the fact of so new something completely different for my career and the fact of you know I don't know what I'm doing yeah. <laughs> and so that in a weird way was what was excites me about it and a little bit of the piece of you know a lot of what corporate ops it's it's putting things together or solving problems and it kind of in a weird way goes back to the design world a little bit yeah where you know what do you do in terms of you know the space planning and all of that was you were solving a problem finding different mm-hmm. flows finding things to like work and function well so I get that a little bit on the corporate ops world so yeah yeah I was I don't know if I answered everything you did (laughs) I remember specifically I was standing in my driveway it was right after I had like solidified everything with moving to director of leasing and I was on the phone with Brandon and he's like yeah we're gonna announce you and Colleen at the same time and I'm like can I call her and he's like yeah you can call her and I called you and we were just like wow like this is so exciting and we get to do it together and like I'm so happy for you no I'm so happy for you like it was just it was so cool to go from you know, you interviewed me and brought me in as a property manager, supported me all through stabilizing that property. You know, we're a champion for me in a new position. We tackled a region together to then like move to this next level together. It was just like, I don't know, it felt storybook in in a sort of way, which was, which and was really cool. And the fact that we had already 
for you to have like leasing and marketing and corporate ops on my end again because they we like, work they, together they so much so much yeah. so it's it's good to already have that like such an awesome history of working really well together and now to like kind of branch these two you know departments together and have them like work all really well we're very supportive like yes. corp ops like loves <laughs> your team yeah vice um, versa because you solve a lot of problems for us everyone on your team does so yeah it's a, it's a really good dynamic yeah, yeah. Well, I do want to get into and break down, you know, all the different things that your team does and everyone that you have on your team because it's it's so layered and covers so much ground. But being that you went to Michigan State and I went to Kansas, both big basketball schools, we are going to kind of transition, do something a little bit fun, play into our competitive spirit. And I believe we're going to do some college basketball trivia with Nicole. How do you feel? Are you ready? I love it. I'm excited about this. I do want to do a disclaimer, though. Anyone that knows me knows I watch an insane amount. You do. You always ins- take the beginning of March Madness off. Yeah, Brandon Lat. Like he's like, when I see your PTO come in, for I the know first it's for two March, days March, March, March Madness. Madness. I giggle, and yeah. I was like, yeah, that's literally all my husband and I do. We, yeah, we have three TVs in our basement, and we watch every single game. <laughs> And so, yes, I watch a lot of college basketball. I do not know statistics. No, so I don't I'm just either. Gonna, this is going to be a hot mess. How this goes. <laughs> All right. Well, we, we're going to take a quick break. We're going to get set up for trivia, and we'll be right back, and we'll see how it goes. All right, ladies. Let's put some of this to the test. <laughs> Who really knows their basketball the best? Neither of us. I, but let's we're not go. very confident all of a sudden. Today, we're going to be playing for a special gift card. If our intern, Zach Bishop, could please enter. Let's go. Woo! <laughs> We've got $25 to Starbucks. So hopefully that's enticing enough for you to try really hard on this trivia. I do want to put a disclaimer that the trivia questions were curated by Rusty, who is Devin's husband. So he's probably setting me up to fail. And you supposedly have not seen No, because I usually make the games for the (laughs) podcast, but I couldn't make this game to make it fair. So yeah, we we third-partied out the game. However, if Devin wins... We know it's rigged. We know it's rigged. (laughs) So Sick, guys. I think you think that he likes me more than he does, so... (laughs) We'll see. All right, here is the first question. Can you name the five Tailwind universities to win at least one national championship? Indiana, Kansas, oh, Indiana, Kansas, Ohio State, Oklahoma State. No, oh, shit. Eh. Okay. Let's give Colleen. All right, I'm going to try it. Michigan State. Yes. Has to be. Indiana, Kansas. <laughs> Arkansas? Yes. Oh! Okay, so you got, well, we're going to work together yeah, on this we one. Work Indiana, together. Kansas, one. Michigan State, Arkansas. Oh, and you said Ohio State. Ohio State. Yeah, that's correct. That. Hey, <laughs> nice job. Half we'll point. That, so yeah, not well, that sounds fair. All right. Question number two. Which Tailwind school has won the most national championships? Kansas. Let's go, baby. No. Okay. Not Kansas. Indiana? Is it, yeah, is it Indiana? It's Indiana. They won five. Kansas won five. No. Four. Four. If you have any discrepancies, I'll please take it up when I get home. Rusty. <laughs> <laughs> he said that it was five for Indiana. Okay. All right. Which Tailwind school most recently won the national championships? Kansas. Yes. Let's go. 2022. I know this. Yeah. You like bought out like every national championship stuff. I this. own everything. Wine glasses. And you like shirts, to show me. And I was yep. like, awesome. Devin, it looks great. <laughs> I have flags for outside of my house. Yes. All right. Here's the next one. Which Tailwind school has the most... National championship losses. Oh. Losses? Oh. Go ahead. Is it Michigan State? No. Is it Kansas? Yes. Oh, okay, well that's... Well, yeah, we have final four losses. Yes. Yeah. We never really get there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Which Tailwind school has the longest active March Madness appearance streak? Oh, oh, that has, that to, has be. to be Michigan State, right? 
hit the buzzer. <laughs> yes. Way by the rules. <laughs> Sorry. 26. Yeah. Straight years? Yes. Yes. Straight. That's wild. Yeah. Good for them. Sort of. <laughs> sort of. <laughs> Next question. Name the six Tailwind schools with at least six Final Four appearances. Oh. Can we tag team this again? Yeah, let's do this one together. Kansas. Right. Michigan State. Yeah. Uh, Indiana. Again. Indiana. I feel like it's all the, like the ones that were Yeah, the Ohio National- State. Yeah, Arkansas. Arkansas. And there's one more. There's one Oklahoma more. Oklahoma State. Yeah. got it. They yes. are pretty good at basketball. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're. This they were is like super my impressive. dream team. Gosh, this is a few. It's when I like won a couple pools of March Madness or oh. whatever, and it was OSU that just was the Final Four Magic team. Yeah. yeah. Next question: Which Tailwind school has won the most regular season conference titles? Oh, there is a clue here. Okay. It's a Big Ten school. Michigan State? No. Indiana? Yes. Oh. Yeah. I should have let you go when I got it wrong. Yeah, I don't really get the really on the we're Indiana just kinda, history here. Yeah, yeah, we're just kind of working together. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think these next ones are going to stomp you. Okay. Sweet. Because we haven't been stomped already or anything. <laughs> we're doing really great. <laughs> okay. Which Tailwind school has only made the March Madness tournament once? Oh. Think, think small. Yeah. Slew? No. Ooh. Think small. Vermilion? Vermilion? Think small and think hot weather. Oh, Miami. Yes, FIU. FIU. But they did really well. Oh, yeah, oh, I didn't make wow. the questions. <laughs> We're going to talk to Rusty later. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Which Tailwind school has the oldest basketball program? Oh, in Indiana, right? No. Kansas? No. What? The oldest? Basketball was invented at Kansas. Mm. <laughs> we have the original rules of basketball. <laughs> it's literally like a brown sheet of paper. You can't read anything on it, but they've got a nice case. So. Rusty, the, if you're listening at home... These girls are fired up. This is not this is going sus. Well. This is sus setup. Who is it? I feel Do you like have any other guesses? No, I'm going to be surprised by this. It's Iowa. Iowa. Iowa? 1892. Hmm. Who cares? I thought they were wrestling. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> They're good at women's basketball. Caitlin Clark. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, this next one is definitely a tiebreaker because I don't know how you could get this correct, but we'll see. We'll see who gets the closest without going over. In total, how many March Madness appearances have Tailwind schools made? Oh, wow. my goodness. Wow, Rusty. He had to do some math. He did. So this would be, of the current Tailwind properties. Uh-huh. Their total combined. It's got to be in the hundreds. And just March Madness appearances. Correct. It's got to be. 500? Yeah, give us like a window. Is um, it higher or lower? Yeah. Lower. 100. Much higher. Much higher. 400. Super close. A little higher. 425. <laughs> I'll just, I'll give it to you. 466. Okay. That's a lot. Look at yeah. Look at okay, well, why didn't you say when I said five hundred that I was close? You didn't give me any indicator. You I just, just said gave lower. Me We're just getting feisty on these. <laughs> <ones>. <laughs> I'm not sure, but I am going to make sure that Colleen gets that gift this card. Is, this is somehow going to become Nicole's fault when, when we're done with it. Oh, I think it should be Rusty's. It is. Definitely Rusty's, but maybe Colleen would share the gift card with yeah, you. We can have coffee together. Yeah. But those are intense. Like, yeah. Are more? That was it. That oh, was the last one. Hey, you know what? We may not have been very good at it, but we work together, and that's what it's all about. <laughs> that was great. Thank you. <laughs> Those were hard. Yeah. 
<laughs> okay, well, we are going to calm down, and then we're going to dive back into it. We're going to talk more about corporate operations and Colleen's team. So we'll be right back. So we just finished a little basketball trivia, which I think was just as hard as we anticipated it to be. Like we knew going in that it wasn't going to be easy. And now that we kind of have the the background of your story, I'd love to really zero in on your team. And so talk a little bit about the need that that kind of arose to to make your team form and then all the different things that that your team does, the different positions and kind of what they cover. Yeah, I think corporate operations really just kind of came together naturally, kind of even prior to the team becoming corporate operations. So as we were kind of growing, we were discovering kind of needs in different areas where Mandy's position was created at one point of, we really need somebody to travel and help sites in different areas and all of that. Emily's position was kind of created because at that time we were transitioning from rent manager to real page. And we really need this person to kind of help with that and troubleshoot issues and answer questions. Be just like an expert. Right. Yeah. So those two kind of formed based out of need and kind of, you know, we're operating a little independently of each, you know, of each other at the time. And then as we were growing, it was, okay, we're acquiring all these new teams and, and what do we need to do training route? So then we were really looking at, you know, we need to kind of create a, a corporate training manager and a program so that, you know, for our people, they're getting the very best, you know, training and development and support yep. pieces of all of that. So, you know, Jericho's role really came into play and, and suddenly it was kind of, we need a, a team and an umbrella for that. So that's how, you know, corporate ops really kind of came about. And then we started kind of adding some other pieces to that too for the support route. So where it sits today is, is Kyla sits in that operation support role. Mm-hmm. So she is definitely that boots on the ground and the person that fills in gaps at locations if we've got, you know, vacancies or whatnot. And and really just kind of takes the property and and manages kind of all the aspects of it. Yep. Uh, works with the regional uh, manager team a lot in terms of if there are things that we need to focus on or special projects. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of back end, you know, support and help there too. And then we've got, got that transaction support side too now with Mandy and her role of, you know, when we acquire a new team, what does that look like from due diligence all the way to, you know, a well, month and how after do we get that. them excited about, you know, because that that's what's so hard for property staff is and i know that in the special segment today david and natalie are going to talk a little bit about transactions as well but you know they don't have any say in the fact that their property is being sold and you know they're going to go work for a brand new employer so mandy's role is critical too because it's like we got to get them excited it's about something that change. they had no control over right yeah all of a sudden you get this new company and what are their processes on things what and are their what, values right yeah. yeah and she does such an incredible job of yeah you know kind of embracing the new team and getting them on board and excited to work for tailwind and and getting them to be okay we're we're good to go we're ready to operate you know kind of under tailwind now. And then Jericho, you know, our corporate leasing or our corporate trainer really has started developing a full program of what does new hire, you know, training look like for every single one of our employees on mm-hmm. the operation side of, you know, PM, RSM. She does a lot of work with your team in terms of like what we do with leasing managers, CAs, all of that. And then, you know, Emily right now in her systems manager role, is really big. And we've had a big change this year where we switched systems again into Entrada. But beyond just that, you know, operational system, she also is such a spearhead of tools and dashboards on things. Like and all business these things intelligence that we, yes, type things. All the yeah. fun things that, you know, hopefully help our site teams, you know, operate and function a lot better. Um, and then kind of our whole team also has business practices and policies on that too. So mm-hmm. we work with all the different departments and, and kind of lay that structure a little bit and a lot of how to's and all of that. Cause the goal, right. Is that, you know, people know how to do their jobs or what's talent's policy on that. You've kind of got those, those parameters. People know where to go and how to be able to, and and the big part of that is autonomy too. You want to give them the resource or resources that it's like, okay, they can go in and walk through this and figure it out themselves and, and grow that confidence. So yeah, that piece is, is equally as important. Biggest change on your team recently has been the addition of regional maintenance, which I, you know, having sat in a property manager seat myself, maintenance is in many ways the backbone of our business. So it was really, really cool to see that development. And also it land within your team and everything that you guys are doing. So talk a little bit about how that need came to be 
and then how Corey and Todd ended up on your team, which two of the best maintenance guys I know, I like know, just I know. perfect fits for a, a brand new position like that. But what, what was that it, like? It was such a long time coming because, you know, we're building out leasing support. Yeah. We're building out, you know, operations support on it. And there is this piece within operations of the whole maintenance side of it. And we I don't want to say we were ignoring it for a long time, but it was definitely like we're missing something. We've got teams of people that need just as much one on one support or resources to help answer questions or troubleshoot things and all of that. So long time, kind of two years prior is when kind of even like in my region, we were test dumbing. We had a person that, you know, really kind of stepped into that role and was that support piece for, for the teams within my region. And yeah. we're like, this is working. This is a good thing. We need to build on this. So yeah, Corey and Todd started beginning of kind of this year. It's been a whirlwind a little bit on it. Our focus so far has been to, they're going kind of got the, the portfolio split between the two of them. And the focus has really been, you know, travel. And I think your team originally did this too. Travel to all the sites. Get to know what you're working with and who you're supporting is a big, a big piece of it, especially on the maintenance side. I feel like you really have to see it to understand it and to be able to support the maintenance teams that are on the ground. Right. Yeah. Learn, learn the property, learn, you know, what, what the issues are, how it's set up, all of that establish really that, that, you know, Hey, we're here to support you and those relationships with the team. Cause I, I do talk a lot about, you know, the PM and maintenance manager relationship a lot. So and important. so it's really key for Corey and Todd to really kind of develop those relationships between those two people too. Yes. It's not just with the maintenance team. They really have to have a good relationship with the PM too. And it's such an area of, you know, if we're looking at a property and, you know, how do we increase NOI or anything like that? Most of the time, like it's in the maintenance area of things. So yeah. our goal really is to kind of level up our, our maintenance teams and make sure that, you know, they're, they've got certifications. They know how to like do certain things so that we can bring in a lot like in-house and, where you're not kind of contracting things out and yeah. stuff like that. So yeah, they've been busy kind of traveling <laughs> across the portfolio, then turn hit. So they've been helping in a lot of different properties the last month. But our goal kind of coming out of that too is to develop preventative maintenance measures too. So again, can we be more proactive in terms of, you know, reactive a lot that maybe we have been in the past of, sure. you know, if we're on top of looking at things, you know, on a on a continual basis, you catch issues and stuff like that. And you kind of, you know, solve a lot of problems and yeah. save money at the same time. So we're going to be busy. It's a, it's a yeah. full structure that hasn't existed yet. And I'm really excited for the guys to, to work with them to help kind of build that structure for the maintenance side of our organization. I will say I have intersected with Todd so much so far this year. He has actually been at two acquisitions and helped us with rebrand parties. So we're fully installing a brand new model, getting ready for a huge party. And he's like, yeah, what do you need me to do? And he's hanging up curtains and welcoming people to the party. And he's like, I want to do more of this. I'm like, Todd, you can come to every rebrand that you want to because you are now a critical member of the team. So, you know, I know Corey's been on some due diligence trips for properties that we've you know, looked at at purchasing, which I think is super important to really understand, you know, with the physical property itself, what are we getting ourselves into? You know, what do we foresee are going to be potential issues or things that we're going to have to remedy? So I've just seen them weave their way into very unique situations where now I can't imagine not having the two of them in the positions that they're in because of the support and what they've brought to the table. So I've loved seeing the maintenance piece, especially on, on your team. I think, you know, the people that you put in those positions are just some of the best and it's, it's been really cool to watch. So I think one of the themes that, that we've kind of talked through without really saying that we're talking through is support. You know, a lot of what your team does, a lot of what both of my teams do is support. You know, how do you balance providing support and structure, which I feel like are two key fundamentals of what your team does, with still creating a space for autonomy for site staff to, to own what's happening at their property? I'm so happy you kind of brought this topic up because it is a challenge. I think our team sometimes gets a little bit of like, oh, it's like the policy police or whatnot. But yeah. in reality, it's it's a fine line, right? So we've, as we're growing, we know we can't necessarily be so much wild, wild west anymore. And also we don't want to be that corporate structure so much so that, you know, I'm 
I'm sitting in the seat as a PM and I feel like I don't have control over there. I've sat in that seat in yeah. other companies. I'm, I'm sure you have too, where you're just like, I'm just a body. And yeah. the I'm just going through the motions. The corporate just tells me what to do even, and they're not even hearing me out in terms of like, you know, have that pool party right now. And you're like, it's December. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> so that's where, you know, our team really, we, we keep that mindset every single day of, okay, what is best for our site managers or their teams in terms of if we're creating like a, a policy or a new procedure? We work very much with, again, all the departments or the regionals and stuff like that. What's What are people going to need buy-in for? We do need this structure, but still leave that openness of, you know, you've, you've got that ability to kind of choose, right? A lot of what we do too is just here's the tool or the enhancement or whatever or guidance on it, but you've still got that freedom to like make that decision or, yeah. or see what you need to do with what's best for your property on that. And so again, it's such a fine line that I think we're just really conscious of, of that line. Um, you need some structure as, as, as we grow, but also we're not going to take away that freedom. You're, you know, we talk all the time about you being like a CEO of your property and you're there for that reason, you know? So, yeah. Yeah. You're giving them the tools to help them chart the path forward that makes the most sense for their property and their team, which I think is awesome. Thank you for for answering that. Let me look at my notes here. I want to talk a little bit about You kind of already shed some light on this, but you know, we made a big change this year from Real Page to Entrada. And I feel like your team was kind of the backbone for that that shift. How do you feel? Where's your head at? What was that like? I mean, that and we're still not even fully out of the woods yet on on that. But what what yeah. was that experience yeah. like for we're you guys gonna, as a team? We're getting to the other side, but slowly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we had the E team in place. You were you were on that, and obviously our different departments were involved with it. Um, but corporate ops was also highly, highly. Everybody on that was a huge help on it. I can't say enough on how incredible my team was through this process. I mean, it was it was a big undertaking. I think it, we started getting everybody in the spring, ready to migrate, and we had this ridiculous time schedule that I think we're just like we're let's get in everybody before turn. But in reality, like oh my such gosh. a lofty goal, <laughs> such a lofty goal. But we did it, and it's very. It was a ton of work in terms of pre migration prep Mm -hmm. kind of in that that migration period and then post and so we're kind of getting to the other side of it but we're with everybody else too where we're like learning the system and learning all the nuances of it and yeah and all of that so you know we're trying to support our teams as best as we can but yeah it's been it's been a a long several months (laughs) well I just you know watching it you know yes we were on the e-team together which for those of you that may not know it was kind of stakeholders in each department kind of giving their how would these decisions impact our department to try and reach solutions that would benefit Tailwind as a whole, which I feel like was a really good idea and has worked really well for us. But yeah, I I saw so much work from your team, you know, on the front end, making sure all the data in the prior system was clean and ready to migrate, you know, talking them through what can you be doing while your property is migrating. You had Jericho organizing the trainings because we had different trainings and people kind of traveling into centralized locations to train, you know, now we're coming out the other side of it, check, 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 make sure all the data is good to go. And, you know, even once everybody's in the new system, the work doesn't stop for you guys, because, you know, as you mentioned before, you're going to have to rewrite policies and resource materials, like it's, it's going to be an over a full year process of really getting everybody into the system, making sure that they feel confident in what they're doing, but then also getting the resources for any new team members to come to know how to navigate it. It's right. crazy. Because our business doesn't stop and we're heading into yeah. beginning of leasing season. This will be the first, you know. First leasing season first in, a leasing in a new Let's system. Let's go. <laughs> so we're going to, you know, we'll find out. But yeah, you're 100% right. It, it, it's We've still got a lot of work to do in front of us. Emily Adams, we had put as, you know, kind of the project manager of this whole thing. And so when we're talking about the pre-prep and the during all of that, she really, you know, led that and spearheaded all of it and was so highly involved and you know I think a direct result of how successful we have been in terms of these migrations but yeah yeah you know Entrada has been been such a big shift and and I'm curious to hear from your perspective like you know as we're getting into it what what are you most excited about what have you really liked what are you hopeful for because it's a big change and it's got to have a big impact so what are some of the early things that you're like I think this is going to be really good for us yeah I think so far the feedback has been 
you know, really positive in terms of, you know, the user friendliness of the system on our end, on the back side of things, there's a lot of different things. I think we're just kind of discovering of, you know, little maintenance, for example, just kind of set up on inspections and all the capabilities there. You know, I can talk a little bit on turn. We set up their move out inspections and it was huge in terms of a setup now where you can enter charges. And I think, you know, the feedback was like that shaved days off of our final move out statement process. If we're shaving days, you know, where somebody's sitting in an office plugging in like things like that, you know, that's huge. So there's a bunch of little stuff like that on the maintenance side of it. We've really, we're excited about getting getting in there and kind of setting up the whole preventative it's maintenance. very customizable. Like, yes, everything about it. And what, so far, I guess, my end of things, what I've experienced too is Intrata is very, they're open in terms of if we don't have this or this doesn't work out, we're willing to listen in terms tell of, us what you, you know, need. tell us and we'll talk to the developers and see if we can make this like happen. So that's very promising. There is some stuff that we're kind of seeing like, oh, it'd be nice if we could do this and this with mm-hmm. it. So to have their open ear on that, I think is really promising for the future. That's but. awesome. I want to circle a little, circle back a little bit to your team. Talk to me a little bit about what you're most proud of that your team has accomplished in the last two years. And if you feel comfortable sharing some of your hopes for the, for the future. Oh man, I, this team is, is amazing. Honestly, they are, our corporate ops for us, our why is supporting, you know, all of our teams on that, whether it's, you know, site level teams or even the different departments across Tailwind as well on it too. And they're really the heart and soul of that. And you can see it in their late hours and, their wants for everyone to kind of succeed. I'm really proud the past year of just with the transition on that too. It was short timelines. There was a lot. We had three acquisitions also happening at the same time. Yeah. We were we don't make it easy on ourselves. No. This is the main theme here yeah. if you guys haven't caught on to this to well, this we, point for any outside listeners. But they haven't they never lost the we want what's best or sure. you know we're gonna pull those later hours and stuff like that so that you know it's easier on the other side. It's a lot that people don't see on our end of things. We're definitely, you know, trying to build that foundation so that others can, you know, have an shine easier and, shine. Yeah. yeah. But really proud of the last couple of years of, you know, the training department kind of putting the structures in place and the fact that a new employee gets to come to Mankato and connect with everyone that they like operate with. You get to meet your property accountant and the HR department and your the marketing team and, you know, all the people that now it's just kind of, okay, these are my support you know system yeah. and my hub of it. And I got to, you know, interact with them not over the phone or virtually, you know, mm-hmm. kind of establish that relationship. I love the fact that that program is going that way. Again, just in terms of our relentless, you know, you can message us anytime. Like we're there, we're going to answer. A lot of the turn support that we've built over the last couple of years on it too. A lot of dashboards, a lot of processes and stuff like that, that I'm hoping has made Tailwind more efficient over the last couple of years. So yeah. really proud of a lot of work that we've done. And you should be, you, you should be. Anything you're like looking forward to, like major projects that you're going to try to tackle here soon that are not top secret and you can share? The fe- I love, yeah, the future is really fun to think about for corporate ops. I feel like we're a very, we're at the development stage of our team. There'll be growth for sure in current positions and also adding positions on certain yeah. things on it. I think we've got our eye on kind of central operations a lot of how can we kind of bring some ho- like stuff in house and and get our team our site teams more focused on resident experience and you know leasing and having a lot of fun where maybe we can support on a different level and kind of take some of some of the non-fun things off their plate. Yeah, We've got kind of that on the horizon. Again, kind of building out the support pieces on it. We've got a ton of work to do in terms of getting live SOPs kind of ready and you know resources for them on how to do everything and be independent and be able to get answers quickly on things. Yeah, there's there's a lot. There's I, a lot. It's pretty vague, but we... <laughs> we'll take it. We'll take it. There's one other thing that I want to hit on before we transition over to this episode special segment. It is August and August is always such a crazy time for our industry, which I think you touched on a little bit earlier. I want to talk about turn because your team plays a big part in helping the properties get ready for turn. You know, you've got people on your team that are dispatched helping with turn. How now that we're on the other side of it, I believe the last move-ins happened over the weekend. 
you know, how do you, how do you feel, how did you feel about Turn this year? Overall, I think we've heard really good things. It was yeah. quiet. It was which quiet, which is a, it's a, a weird sign. thing, but a really good sign, right? Yeah. Yeah, where our team comes into play, we're really almost on the, the prep part of it. Sure. So, I mean, we started back in April kind of budgeting, planning, you know, building that in with their budget, you know, building their budget time frame of what does turn look like financially and all of that. What are your, where are your contracts at, financial planning, all of that. And then we really challenged the teams and kind of have built some te- uh, tools to really just think about the whole process all the way through. What's your plan? What's your execution? And I think that's drastically helped, especially newer PMs that, you know, yeah. what is turn? I'm a little scared of this to have some sort of tool in place or our support on the like, okay, have you thought about this? Have you had this conversation with your regional about this? These are certain questions to ask vendors, all those things. So we've really kind of built out a whole kind of, you know, prep structure on it. We're going to get you ready and then we're going to turn you loose. And then of course we kind of offer, you know, here's some support pieces too of how you manage during turn on that. And like you said, you know, we were definitely across the board too. People were traveling all over to to help the different teams when they physically needed help as well too. So happy, happy we've moved out of that time I was going to say turn turn felt quieter <laughs> this year which which I feel like we just have to take as a good thing you know one of the the interesting themes that I've seen is properties adjusting kind of their move in and move out dates I mean back in the day and and I don't know if you'll agree with me on this it was everybody moves out on July 31st and your move in is happening on August 14 15 16 one of those days and now you see properties moving out July 25th and trying to move in closer to August 10th cuz you know, you've got Greek rush and, and you're trying to accommodate those early move-ins that for years you had to turn down. So it's it's been an interesting shift to see where not everybody's kind of operating on the, the, the schedule that we're so used to, to seeing has been an interesting shift too. I love to see it because again, not everything fits how, you know, in one little box. And so the fact that sites are becoming more empowered of like, okay, this is how I want my site to operate because we want to accommodate XYZ. It's all about the resident experience, right? So I love the fact that, you know, teams are saying, yep, we need, you know, a shorter time frame for turn to be able to like do this. Hopefully we've built enough support or the systems that have prepped them better so that they can shorten their window of like turn because they're operating more efficiently and whatnot so that we can, you know, shorten those time frames or yeah. accommodate those move-ins or whatever. So it's it's a good thing to like see. It yeah. is. It really is. Well, now what I think we're going to do is we're going to fly back to our studio in Mankato and David Hughes, our director of IT, is actually going to be interviewing Natalie so that we can learn a little bit more about the legal team and transactions and all that. So really excited to hear what they have to say. So we're going to transition it over to them now and we'll be back with you in just just a little bit. Thank you, Devin and Colleen, for that introduction. I am, of course, David Hughes, IT Director here at Tailwind Group. I'm here with Natalie Stubbs, our in-house attorney for Tailwind. And Natalie, thank you for being here and welcome to the podcast. Thank you for having me. Now, we're going to jump right into to your, your work history. Tell us a little bit about what you did before working at Tailwind. So prior to joining Tailwind, I was with the real estate group with the law firm Fagery Drinker. I worked on complex commercial real estate transactions and represented companies uh, ranging in size from small, closely held companies to large national-based corporations and everything in between. And my experience with the firm really laid the groundwork for me to come into the legal group, um, hit the ground running, and really contribute to the furthered success of the company. Excellent. Yeah, and the uh, you've been here for several months now. How long have you been here now? I think it's about five. Five months, now. okay. And can you tell us a little bit about your onboarding experience with Tailwind and how your experience has been so far? Sure. Yeah. So my onboarding experience went really well. Crystal did a really good job of kind of easing me into the role rather than throwing me to the wolves. And that really allowed me to gain perspective on the operations within Tailwind, Tailwind's um, risk tolerance levels as well. And that perspective set me up really well for taking over the reins of our real estate transactions and providing legal guidance to our property management teams and regional property management teams as well. Sure. And I imagine Crystal may have done that because I'm pretty sure she was thrown to the wolves. So I'm <gasps> glad that she's eased yes, you into yes, that, yes, to the that's, madness. That's what I hear. Well, can you tell us what a typical day looks like for you 
here at Tailwind? So truly every day is completely different. I know tomorrow isn't going to be the same, but every day I start off with a list of everything that I want to accomplish in that day, knowing full well that I'm never going to get to everything on the list. But a typical day and my roles and responsibilities really go hand in hand. Um, So as an in-house attorney, my roles and responsibility encompass just a broad range of functions, providing legal guidance to all departments within Tailwind. So whether that's, you know, our commercial development team, investment team, um, HR folks, property management team, and then my role extends from there into risk management. So identifying potential legal risks, providing strategies to mitigate those risks. And all of that really helps me further the continued success and growth of Tailwind. Sure. And that kind of goes into what the legal team does here at Tailwind. Can you expand on that? Yeah, that's a really good question. So we've recently broke this up into five categories of what the legal team does. The first category would be corporate support. So as some know, Tailwind is made up of numerous legal entities. And so it's providing, you know, making sure that all of those entities are legally compliant, providing legal guidance to all of all of them as well. The second category I would say would be leasing and policies. And that's for both our student housing properties and our commercial properties as well. The third category would be HR support. So that's for our wonderful HR folks with Tailwind. The fourth category would be risk management, which is, again, very overarching, but can include things like non-disclosure agreements, general contract review and negotiation, things like that. And then the fifth category, which I would say is arguably the largest, would be our transactions. And so that's acquisitions, dispositions, construction, development, refinances, sure. things like that. Certainly keeping you busy. And, and yes. with all the acquisitions we've been doing recently or, or the past few years, can you tell us about your role in that process? Mm-hmm. So from a 30,000 feet perspective, my role um, in transactions is really to manage the transaction to manage our deal checklist, to provide support to all of the departments that are on our transactions team, and then to get the deal across the finish line. So from a granular perspective, starting at the inception of a deal, it's negotiating the letters of intent, negotiating the purchase agreement, reviewing diligence that comes in, negotiating certain coverages that we get with those diligence reports, reviewing and negotiating, well, assisting the investments department in reviewing and negotiating loan documents, preparing and negotiating our real estate transactions documents, making sure that we hit all of our deadlines along the way. And then on closing day, it's really doing a look back and saying, okay, for example, in an acquisition, Did the seller meet all of their obligations along the way? Are are all of the numbers right on the settlement statement? Are we in a position to fund? Does the lender have everything that they need? And then ultimately giving authorization to release those wires. Sure. I mean, every one of those steps, I imagine, is, it doesn't even really sound simple, but but let's say it sounded simple. (laughs) I know every one of those steps takes a long time, even just contract negotiations and contract Mm -hmm. review from an acquisition perspective. Mm -hmm. You know, I know when it comes to that, I I and and my team are reading a ton of contracts and then mostly sending to you to read again and (laughs) make sure I didn't miss anything. Yes. Um, Well, excellent. We've got some other fun questions for you. And this one, we I think we're all looking forward to, and it's regarding stereotypes and attorneys. Mm-hmm. Are there any stereotypes that you think are, are are real or which ones are completely unfounded? Oh, gosh. Well, I mean, in certain personalities, I've worked with certain personalities that I would say some of the stereotypes could ring true. But I think probably some stereotypes of in-house attorneys are that, you know, we're here to tell you no. 
that we have maybe a limited personality. We're not that personable. You know, I don't view my role as ever being here to tell somebody no. It's always to give the most legally compliant path forward. Unless someone is blatantly breaking the law, (laughs) in which case I will say, please don't do that anymore. But, you know, I would say the legal team here at Tailwind, we're pretty unique. You know, if you sit in on our meetings, we work really hard. We care very much about what we're doing. We care very much about the success of the company. But we're also really fun. And I think if you can laugh along the way, which maybe you guys hear during our meetings, you know, it makes it all all right. Yeah. So. And that's that's a good attitude to have. I like what you said about, you know, finding a legal path forward instead of just saying no. And knowing our owners, I I, I am confident that's the preferred, you know, response that they would get. They they yes. They don't like obstacles. They want to move forward. So let's figure out the right way to do it. Yeah. But but keep moving. And you know, I I laugh a little bit about stereotypes. I always think about there was a, we had an investment team member here at Tailwind that I I'm fortunate to to be invited to some of our summits and I've and I've spoke at several of them for our award ceremonies and stuff like that. And I wouldn't say I'm very good at it, but but one one time I came off stage and they're like, You're not a, the usual IT guy. You can actually <laughs> talk. And I'm like, I don't know how to take that, but thanks. Right. I guess. <laughs> say, well, you know a lot of our properties. You've done a lot of the the back end work. I'm sure you visited some. Do you have any on your like wish list of properties that you've, you know? been through the paperwork, you know it front and back, but maybe haven't been there yet. You know, I would say, I mean, I wouldn't put one property over the other, but the one that comes to mind would be Starkville because that was the most recent transaction that I worked on. And, you know, I've seen the plans for the clubhouse renovation. I think it's going to be amazing. And so seeing a before and after, I think would be really interesting. Yeah. Yeah. That, that renovation is going to be Incredible. The the one thing that will forever stick in my head about Starkville is the cicadas. Just incredible <laughs> cicadas. It, it's all I could hear when I went outside. Yeah. Well, Natalie, thank you so much for for joining us today. We're we're so happy you're here. We 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 love the insight into your department and what you do here. Now I think it's time that we transition back to Devin and Colleen to to wrap us up in Columbus, Ohio. Back to you guys. Well, a huge thank you to David and Natalie for that awesome segment. What what a great, you know, spotlight. And I think that was really cool. Colleen, it's been so much fun to get to do this with you. I'm so glad that when I was like, hey, will you please drive the four hours down and, and do this while the team's in Columbus, that as you mentioned earlier, you would do anything that I asked you to do, <laughs> even if it's a little bit scary and puts you out of your comfort zone. So how was it? How was your first podcast experience? It's been so experience? much fun. Oh my gosh. And seeing your team, like the, the whole setup, setup and the background, yeah. it's amazing I think this I don't know I've, I've listened to all of them it, I'm such a supporter of this podcast it's such a fun idea and I'm so thankful for inviting me it's been fun it was it was definitely time to pull back the the curtain on corporate operations because I think if your team is doing what they do best a lot of times people don't know what they're doing so I'm glad it was a great first experience I'm glad you kind of got to see the behind the scenes I'm glad we could really shine a light on your incredible team and everything that they have done and just thank you for for doing this with me it's it's always fun when we get to do stuff together I think it just makes it a a better experience but I think we're going to leave it there unless you have have anything else it was great yeah good good well thank you guys so much for listening to episode four we really appreciate everybody that's been on this journey with us and continues to kind of listen through the different episodes as we spotlight different aspects of Tailwind it's been a been a really fun adventure if you have any suggestions for us for future episodes please email Email us at marketing at the tailwind group.com. Otherwise, we hope that you enjoy this episode and we will catch you in episode five from our temporary studio here in Columbus, Ohio. <laughs> we will say see you later. And that's about it. Thanks, guys. <laughs>